Welcome to the dark stream, Vox Day, voxday.blogspot.com, and unauthorized.tv. Uh, I have no idea if anyone can see this. Uh, I certainly can't see anything, <laughs> so um, it would be useful to know. But uh, it looks like we're not get, we're getting audio. I'm trying to figure out why we're not getting video. Um, can you see, uh, can you guys see the picture at all? Oh, you can see video. Okay, well, I can't. So um, that's really not, I guess, that big a deal. Uh, let me just arrange it so that I can have some idea what's going on. So what we're talking about tonight is the true test of Donald Trump. And I know everybody is uh, tense. I know everybody is, uh, or at least most people here, are, are disappointed. And as somebody said, uh, the big question now is, will Donald Trump cross the Rubicon? And that's exactly what we're talking about here. That's exactly what we're dealing with here. That's exactly the issue. Um, and... While I know that a lot of people are, are looking for someone, anyone, to tell them, hey, this is going to happen. Hey, everything is going to be okay. It's just not possible because no plan survives contact with the enemy. And the enemy always gets a vote. And so the optimistic thing here that is that we have someone in Donald Trump, in President Trump, who is at least potentially willing to do the right thing and who's willing to fight for the right thing, who's not inclined to play the uh, Republican fall guy and say, oh, well, Gee willikers, guys, we, we sure put on a, a good fight. We, you know, we, we really tried hard and gosh golly, it just wasn't good enough. Good luck to the other fellows. You know, um, that's not happening. And that's why I am still optimistic. That's why I'm still wearing my uh, Trump slide shirt. And... <laughs> You know, it, it's obvious, it's absolutely obvious that the Biden campaign is the uh, beneficiary of a tremendous number of fake votes. You know, what we have here is the fake news covering for the corrupt election officials to produce fake votes and try to establish a fake president. Um, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I don't know if, uh, if creepy Joe has surfaced yet to, uh, start trying to speak, but you know, like I posted on, on social galactic earlier tonight, can you imagine how hopped up they must have him on chemicals to dare to put him in front of the camera at a moment like this? I mean, anything, anything is possible. How many fake votes? Well, I think that you're looking at, um, you know, I've seen the number uh, 10 million. So somewhere between, uh, somewhere between 10 and 12 million would be my guess. Um, you know, for example, there's 100,000 fake votes in Hennepin County, Minnesota alone. You know, how can I say that? It's really simple because the number of votes for the Democratic candidate has barely changed in the last four elections prior to this one. Hillary, uh, Obama didn't make a difference. And so um, when, you, when you look at, uh, at that um, in Minnesota, in the heart of George Floyd, Antifa burning, 
the city to the ground. Hennepin County is where all the riots were. It's where all the fires were. You know, a lot of people who voted Democrat or in Minnesota, as, as we call it, DFL, uh, a lot of people who voted DFL were actively talking about how they were going to be voting for uh, voting for Trump voting, or more voting against the Democrats just because the Democrats allowed their city to be burned to the ground. And yeah, a lot of people are, are, have commented on the, the fact that there's 125%, 200% of the registered voting voters supposedly voting. Um, uh, Elias uh, says, uh, Biden got less votes than Hillary in all the big cities except for Atlanta and Detroit. Well, that's not quite true. The cheating was not limited to there. The cheating may be most obvious and most critical there. But like I said, there's a, a, about 100,000 fake Democrat votes in Hennepin County alone. Uh, I didn't look at the exact number in Ramsey County, uh, which is, you know, I went to school in Hennepin County, but I grew up in Ramsey County. And uh, Ramsey County uh, was showing the same signs of uh, ridiculous overperformance that Hennepin did. Um, Karen took the kids says, do you think there's any credence in the watermark rumors? I don't think we can know. I mean, you know, on the one hand, uh, DHS came right out. I, I think there's some other um, office that came right out and said, no, that's not true. Uh, or that they're not, they're not doing any sting operation. Does that mean that there weren't any watermarks? No. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to say. But, uh, you know, and, and I had to, I mean, you know, a number of people have asked me, well, where was the Trump, Trump slide? I said, the Trump slide was right in front of you. Donald Trump got, at, you know, around 10% more votes than he did when he beat Hillary. You know, when Obama ran for reelection, he got 5% less votes than he did the previous time. When uh, Bill Clinton ran for president, uh, ran for president, he got um, five percent more votes than he had the previous time because Ross Perot wasn't running. And so, uh, you know, it, I mean, it's it's completely and utterly obvious what happened. You know, once when I was paying very close attention to Florida. Trump over, overperformed there by about 5%. He won Florida quite easily. Um, Broward County, which for decades has been uh, kind of the epicenter of, of Democratic voter fraud, uh, they stopped it there. They stopped it in Miami-Dade. And uh, once things were getting reported that Trump was going to win in Michigan, in Wisconsin, in Georgia, in North Carolina, they stopped the vote and then went and produced you know, hundreds of thousands of votes. And it, you know, and it's and it's very very obvious because all you have to do is look at the votes for president versus the votes for the local offices in the Senate. What you will see, what you will absolutely see, is that the number of votes, uh, you know, the, the ratio of presidential votes to non-presidential votes is going to be inordinately high in those cities where the late cheating took place. And, you know, people can complain all they want about, oh, it's whining, it's sort of, no, it's not. <laughs> you know, the, the vote, the election was completely illegitimate. And so, um, you know, now that's why I said that this is the true test of Donald Trump, because either he is going to fight and win and hold on to the presidency, or he's going to give in to the pressure from the media and go along to get along 
and, um, you know, leave his country to suffer the, you know, what's, what's going to happen if things go that way. Now, uh, do you think Trump could have helped prevent this magnitude of fraud? Yes, I do think that he could have. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, he had a choice and he chose not to crack down hard on the social media companies, um, you know, after 2018. I mean, it, it was very, very clear. It was very, very clear that they were going to try something. I mean, I'm a little bit surprised at the magnitude, but again, the reason for the magnitude is because they didn't expect the Trump slide. They didn't expect that Trump was going to perform as well as he did. You know, the, I mean, one thing about the left is that they have a very bad habit of believing their own nonsense. And so that often causes them to make ridiculous mistakes. And you know, I mean, they've got people on video filling out ballots, election counters filling out ballots. It's, in, you know, the statistical analysis, the, um, the Benford uh, analysis, there's, there's absolutely no indication whatsoever that any of this was legitimate. It's not legitimate. And... Uh, you know, they're not behaving as if they believe it either. Where's Biden been? You know, why isn't Biden out there uh, declaring, uh, you know, count the votes and, and, and doing all that stuff? I mean, he's being sequestered because he's got dementia. And so, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it's really ridiculous. Um, do you think the glitch admission, admissions are them trying to give the election back nicely and avoid the wrath of the God Emperor? Um, I don't know. I, I just really don't know. Um, it's certainly not going to cut it. Uh, Nick Ricada says, Nick Ricada doesn't think the courts will do anything. He says that they haven't done anything in the past. Says nothing can be done about fraudulent votes. Um, well, <laughs> That's the uh, weakness of legal analysis. You know, Nick is very competent and he really knows the law and he's probably right. Um, you know, lawyers tend to be a little bit cowardly and judges are the most cowardly of all. They, I mean, you know, if there's one thing I've learned about uh, judges throughout, um, you know, the various lawsuits and arbitrations and so forth. It's that they will take every opportunity to avoid making a decision that they can. Right. So the point is that at some point in time, at some point in the next two months or so, Donald Trump is going to have to decide whether he is willing to take action or not. And, you know, Machiavelli says that the reason societies fail is because good men don't do what is necessary to preserve their societies. And that's what we're going to find out. You know, is Donald Trump a warrior? Is Donald Trump a lion? Is Donald Trump the kind of person who is going to put his country first? Or is he a member of the elite who is a, you know, a good man with good intentions, but who ultimately is afraid to disrupt the process and to go against the, the, the forms and the etiquette? Uh, Colin Court says, the courts will tremble at the amount of fraud and let it stand. It is too huge a responsibility. Precisely. Precisely. 
And, and that's why people are correctly comparing this period that we're in right now to Julius Caesar north of the Rubicon facing that crucial decision, you know, do we roll the dice and do what is, is, is what needs to be done or do we wave the white flag by doing nothing and just going along to get along. And so, you know, I think that it's very clear that Donald Trump supporters want him to cross the Rubicon. You know, that's what is, that's what is necessary. That's what needs to be done. And that's of course, what the media and what the various alliances that put this whole thing together um, are, are terrified that he's going to do. You know, <laughs> I, I, this is when you wish that Donald Trump Jr. was, was president because there's no question that Donald Trump, that we know what Donald Trump Jr. would do. We know what he is advising him to do. And so, um, you know, so, but, but this is why it's so important to, uh, <laughs> this is funny. Uh, this is why it's so important to keep the faith, to trust the president and to support his efforts when he, uh, you know, in this difficult time. Someone says, <laughs> Stefan says, are you insinuating our elections don't work? Uh, no, I'm not insinuating it, Stefan. I'm telling you that the elections in 2020, the presidential election in 2020 was entirely corrupt and that Joe Biden didn't get anywhere nearly the number of legitimate votes that the media is reporting. You know, this is not new. The media lies. The media is full of lies. The media is particularly full of lies now. This isn't news. This shouldn't surprise you at all. Tim says, thanks, Vox, for all your encouraging posts. You know, look, I'm just, I'm just sharing what I think. Uh, you know, I don't have, like I said, uh, I wish I had some, you know, fascinating uh, insights, or uh, I wish I was privy to some amazing secrets that I could say, hey, don't worry about it. It's totally in the bag, et cetera, et cetera. I, I can't. I know I'm, I'm overseas. I know nothing about what uh, the, the plans of people on either side are. You know, I just happen to be a highly intelligent observer who is capable of recognizing patterns. Georgia went for Trump. Wisconsin went for Trump. Michigan went for Trump. Pennsylvania went for Trump. It is very likely, I'd have to look more closely at it, but it is very likely that Minnesota actually went for Trump. Like I said, I know the voting history of the big counties there. There were way too many votes. You know, the, 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 percent, the, the percentage of reported turnout was way too high. You know, it makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, look, math matters. When you do the math, you can see before the rocket gets there, whether it's going to hit what it's supposed to hit or not. The math has to add up and the math doesn't even begin to add up for Joe Biden in at least five of those states and possibly more. Karen took the kids says, Trump has inadvertently been put at a crossroads to go down as the best president in history or go and do some painting before he dies. I have faith that he'll make the right decision. Well, the thing is, it's not really 
a decision. Not really. Because the, the left has already made it clear. They're not going to go along with the whole, oh, go ahead and retire to your villa and we'll leave you alone. You know, go live your nice life and we'll leave you and we'll leave your family alone to run your businesses. They are going to absolutely do everything they can to destroy him if he is foolish enough to lay down and accept the fraud. Doesn't mean he won't. You know, it's a question that only he can answer. I can't answer it for him. You can't answer it for him. And so, yeah, exactly. Coddington points out they're already making lists. They're already talking about making lists of Trump supporters. Precisely. Working class bear said Trump will fight for his win, our win. I definitely hope so. You know, I, I think that Trump has sent signs. He sent very clear signs that he's planning to do so. But again, we don't know until it happens. Bradford Walker, <laughs> he's right. The bigger problem with Minnesota isn't just our local Dems. It's that the GOP here are long-term cucks and neocons. We even have a neocon think tank here. Oh, you think I don't know that? My dad helped set it up. You know, I, I think that my dad might have been the original uh, source of the some of the funds for that neocon think tank, if it's the one that I'm pretty sure you're talking about. Um, you know, that's the danger of, of setting up organizations. They get captured and then they end up uh, being used against the interest of the founders. <laughs> um, between Biden's votes violating Benford's law to the difference in down ballots, every swing state using the same Dominion voting machines and the time this is taking, it's as clear as the day that the fix is in. But no, the fix is not in. The fix is being attempted. But you know, President Trump controls the military. President Trump controls the executive branch. President Trump has the ability to deal with this correctly if and when he chooses to do so. You know, and you know. You guys have all done what you could do by voting. And now what you need to do is you need to keep your spirits up. Don't obsess by engulfing yourself in the media's demoralizing lies. They are, that, that's what they are attempting to do. That's their whole purpose is to make you give up. You know, they're always trying to make you give up because that's how they win. They don't usually win by outright defeating people. They win by convincing people not to fight because, oh, fighting won't do any good and people will call you names and all this sort of thing. And so um, you know, there's a saying from Gamergate that I think that you'll um, recognize, which is the ride never ends. You know, what do you think it meant when I said conflict is in, or conflict is the air we breathe and conflict is the water in which we swim? This is what we are made for. This is what makes us stronger. This is what makes life interesting. And the, the important thing is to accept it, embrace it. Don't sit there and cry about the fact that you're living in significant times. Don't despair because the media says, oh, it's hopeless and Biden is president and, and all this nonsense. They're trying to program you. They're trying to make you accept their vision of reality. You know, 
And so um, Brian Boru points out, it's the anniversary of Lepanto today. Precisely, you know, another battle that should have been lost, but wasn't. It would have been if nobody had been willing to show up for it. It would have been if nobody had been willing to fight. You know, so the thing is, is that when you go into conflict, there are times when it's appropriate to withdraw, live to fight another day, all that sort of thing. But there's also times when you have to make the rubble bounce. There's also times when you need to say, you know, this is where I make my stand. And for President Trump and for the American people, this is one of those times. And so, um, you know, it, it's going to be very interesting and I hope very inspiring to see what the next weeks and months have in store for us. But no matter what is in store, you must keep your spirits up. You must keep your head up. Think about how Jesus' disciples felt when they saw Jesus getting nailed up on the cross. I mean, think about how completely given over to despair they must have been. You know, but the only thing that we should fear is God. Fear God only. You know, everything else is just another opponent to be beaten. Despair, fear, worry, concern. Don't allow yourself to give into it. You know, one of the reasons that I didn't uh, do a dark stream right away is that, you know, I was, uh, I just, I was tired of people worrying all the time. You know, people have said, oh, but, you know, I don't, I don't like how, how Trump or I don't like how some of his uh, supporters are, are looking and, and I don't like how they're not necessarily as, you know, fired up and gung-ho as, as I would find encouraging. You know, these are people who are in serious sleep deficit. They're literally exhausted, you know, and you know how Trump works. He goes and then he coasts for a bit. You know, right now, you know, they're, they're waiting for the other side to make their move. Anthony says, do you know people in Minnesota who have nostalgia for the pre-Somali past? Uh, pretty much everyone. <laughs> I mean, apparently the downtown is just hopeless now. Uh, there's, you know, there's a couple areas that are, are improved and all right. But, um, you know, it's, I mean, even uh, like 12 years ago or, or whatever, um, it, it was unrecognizable. So... Um, my shield is just discussed says this is where Trump decides whether he'll be remembered for thousands of years or forgotten in a week. Exactly. And from what we've seen of Donald Trump over the last five years, he's going to make the right decision. He's going to do the right thing. Thermos Fullerton says all this election has done was motivate me more to build, create and connect no despair. And that's exactly what should be the reaction, no matter what happens. But there's absolutely no reason, none, to feel any despair because the media is lying again. Remember, the media also said that Joe Biden was 347 points ahead in every single state in the country. It's several days after the election now, and... They still haven't even dared 
they still haven't even dared to try to claim that Biden won. Notice how they're afraid to even come right out and say it. So, you know, but we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, media lying is not breaking news. <laughs> that, that's a good point too. It's hard to believe he'd fight impeachment for three years, COVID most of this year, and then just give up. Uh, yeah, this is, this is definitely an attempt at a color revolution. And it's also, uh, you know, all assets activated. Darth Pliskin said, Trump did the right thing. He may go down, but at least he will go down fighting, unlike those bow tie wearing neocons worrying about, our, worrying about class. Well, that's correct. But I don't think that, I don't think that it's even really begun. You know, if, if they thought that they could beat him in a fight, they would come at him, you know, head on. But it's all about give up, give up. We're starting rumors about how you're raging and how you're isolated and all this stuff. I mean, it's literally a bad screenplay. You know, these, these people are not good writers. And that's part of how you know it's false too. You just, you read, you read the uh, unattributed accounts of supposed insiders and, oh, we're trying to decide who can tell them he lost and all this stuff. You know, the, for those who are too young to realize, they're using, they're uh, remaking the old Nixon script where uh, they're trying to find the right figure to go in and tell them it's time to give in, time to give up. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so. So this will be interesting to see how it shakes out. But again, be of good cheer. Don't give in to despair. Don't fear. You know, Donald Trump has shown every indication that he's going to do whatever he needs to do. And when that happens, you know, you're going to see the media shrieking just as much Um as they're crowing now. So hang in there, keep your spirits up. Uh, if you're, uh, you know, stay away from the mainstream media, if it's getting you down, come by the blog. And you know, we don't, we don't permit uh, despair there. And so, um, and also it's always a good idea to pray for the president and pray for your country. So have a good evening. I'm Vox Day. And I'd like to say that this is the dark stream and tune off and turn it off in a um, smooth manner. Oh, I just found the button. So, so, uh, and if anyone from the Trump campaign is watching this, if there's a Rubicon, time to cross it. Have a good evening. <laughs>